TVP number 133, Financial Independence, the Utility of Import-Export. Note, the following is another article by Kyle Reardon, reposted here in audio and video format. This episode is on the ever-important topic of Financial Independence, FI, the main tool of coercion and compliance in the first realm, uh, the Servile Society. While the best time to strive for or achieve FI was a few years ago or even yesterday, uh, the next best time is today. And uh, with the help of Rayo and uh, the Liberating Freedom Strategy of Vanu, uh, Kyle lays it out quite simply. Uh, please enjoy, and always remember, Vanu is yours for the making. Quote, I often encourage folks who are preparedness-minded to develop a second income stream with a home-based business. Once you have that business started, then start another one. A successfully recession-proof home-based business is likely to be one in which the demand for your goods and services is consistent, even in a weak economy. Keep in mind that if you choose publishing or another mail-order venture selling something compact and lightweight, then you can take advantage of a national or even global market. But if you are selling a service or a relatively bulky or heavy handcrafted item, then your market will be essentially local. So choose your venture wisely. End quote. James Rawls. Good Americans within the, within the Servile Society typically commute five days a week in order to work eight hours per day. These workers often stop by grocery stores or similar businesses on their way home from work so as to pick up dinner every other day or at least a few times a week. The problem with such a lifestyle is that the frequency of traveling to and fro on the government's public roads increases the vulnerability to coercion of said motorists due to traffic stops. Imagine, if you will, a noticeably different lifestyle whereby you travel once a week to a job site and work overtime while you're there, and by the end of the week, you go home. Similarly, you can only shop for groceries once every few weeks, or even several months out. Notice, too, that it's not just the frequency of exporting labor and products relative to importing knowledge and supplies, but also the context of how you're doing it. Financial independence, FI, could be defined as making a livelihood without a steady employer. Absent a 9-to-5, just over broke, a job, many good Americans literally wouldn't know what to do with themselves, sadly, because they are often indoctrinated to believe that their sense of self-worth is tightly bound to the consumerist fantasy of developing a career, an idea that has little to do with survivability and much to do with Stockholm Syndrome with the Servile Society itself. Often, FI can take the form of freelancing, working for a variety of clients on a per-assignment basis, and or intensive saving, a form of frugality, whereby you save 50% to 80% of your take-home pay. In 1971, Rayo discussed whether it was possible, or even desirable, to achieve personal freedom through wealth accumulation. He said, quote, Freedom through wealth. Some have said that the best way to achieve personal freedom is to first become wealthy. Here are some contrary points. Someone pursuing wealth tends to get caught up in associated status games and neglect his real objective. Psychological paralysis sets in. Of freedom seekers I have known who tried to get rich, most have not been successful, perhaps because they know too much to play the games with the same dedication and intensity as do the middle American strivers. The few wealthy libertarians of who I know first became wealthy, then libertarian. One is more apt to be successful and perhaps even get rich, doing something he enjoys doing, which he can do without contradicting his values, than he is doing supposedly high-income activities which he doesn't enjoy." End quote. As is with everything else involved with finuance, function determines form, means determine ends. How you go about achieving something is just as important as what that something is. If accumulating wealth were done in such a manner as to make you less finure, then it's not vanu, plain and simple. Rayo went on to observe that, quote, At present there is relatively little vanu to be purchased. It's mostly do-it-yourself. Most high-income professions are narrowly specialized, dependent upon an economy of tens of millions of people. But only, a relatively f but only a relatively few people, thousands at most, are apt to vanu themselves in the foreseeable future. The demand in a small market is for broad skills. Most of the relatively free people in North America today have relatively low incomes. Hippies, hobos, some Indians, and some blacks. Historically, Jews have been more successful than gypsies at surviving and maintaining heterodox cultures, despite their greater emphasis on wealth. For what it's worth, gypsies have enjoyed better public relations." End quote. What this suggests is that FI is not synonymous with being rich. Some individuals who could be said to enjoy FI are wealthy, whereas others who are truly financially independent are not millionaires. FI is less concerned with how much disposable income you have than with how dependent you are upon others for your livelihood. 
Frequently, a single source of income does make you more vulnerable to coercion than having multiple sources of income, for if one source dries up, you can fall back on the others until you get that one replaced. Rayo admitted, quote, Personal experience. I have only moderate savings. I'm not wealthy by most standards, but my achievement of Vanu has been limited much more by time and personal skills than by money. There are many products and services which I could and would purchase if they were available. They aren't. Of course, someone already into a skill or business whereby they can earn much money easily may well be advised to keep at it for a few years and build a nest egg, but for most Vanuists, I don't think wealth is worth much effort. End quote. Nest eggs, simply put, are batches of accumulated capital. Granted, building up a nest egg is usually proof of intensive saving, yet capital accumulation wasn't done here so as to eventually get to the point of building your own investment portfolio, which Rayo didn't address. The takeaway here is that wealth does not equal freedom. You cannot buy your way to freedom in much the same way you cannot buy yourself into romance, as it were. A year later, in 1972, Rayo explicated upon import-export, particularly as it related to FI. Just to reiterate, when conducting import-export, Venuans import supplies and knowledge while exporting labor and products back out to the servile society. Rio remarked that, quote, A Vanu home seems essential for psychological well-being, and domestic activities are relatively easy to Vanu. They do not require elaborate equipment or deep involvement with outsiders. In contrast, earning money takes up only a relatively small part of one's life. At $2 per hour clear, 300 hours of city labor, one month with overtime, will pay for eight months of Vanu living. And earning money usually requires export, difficult to accomplish without interference. So Vanu should begin at home. While it's nice for a Vanu home to be financially productive, this isn't essential, end quote. Given the annual inflation percentage rate between 1972 and 2017 was 4.01%, then that would mean that $2 in 1972 would be equivalent to about 11.75 today. Still above minimum wage, but not by much. So if you pulled 80 hours per week for about a month, or 40 hours per week for seven and a half weeks, you'd rake in around $3,525 these days. Even as expressed in today's FERNs, FRNs, Living on $3,500 for eight months is mighty impressive for proving it's possible to survive below the federal poverty threshold and thus not incur an income tax liability. Rayo advised, quote, have savings before moving. During your first year or two in wilderness or Vanu environment, expect to be occupied developing shelter and learning Vanu living skills. You will have little time for money earning, even if opportunities are at hand, end quote. This is to encourage those becoming Vanuer to initially develop nest eggs before trying their hand at strategic relocation. Rayo continues, quote, earn money by exporting labor at first. Don't expect to earn money immediately gathering herbs or dredging gold if you have time left from home development. What opportunities are there may be for wilderness income require considerable skills to pay off. Scrounging for jobs in a small town is a bad scene. Get jobs in cities if that is what you have done. Preferably temporary employment, which fits your living patterns. If you have a free mate or children, let them remain at your Vanu home while you commute weekly or seasonally. Why subject them to bludge, smog, and chance of nuclear incineration, end quote. Again, this is the significance of import-export with the Servile Society, which would entail some degree of interfacing with city rats. Thankfully, due to the growth and expansion of the internet, conducting import-export through the freighting and communication services of the Servile Society uh, has never been easier. Think e-commerce like eBay or Amazon. Yet the issue of dealing with the transportation of personnel is still at large and unresolved. Truth of the matter is that FI increases mean time to harassment, MTH, by deprogramming good Americans of the very antiquated notion known as so-called job security in the first place, which is nothing more than a consumerist fantasy. The connection between freelancing and intensive saving becomes quite pronounced, as Rayo further described it. Quote, don't change vocations until you achieve a Vanu home. If you can clear $2 or more per hour in your present non-Vanu job, you'll probably achieve Vanu quickest by staying with it, until you have enough capital to cut loose for two years. Don't spend time getting into a slightly better, non vanu occupation still dependent on that society if you expect to live most of your life out of that society. A do-at-home vocation such as freelance writing or mail-order selling is best developed after you have a Vanu home." End quote. Yet again, $2 back then became approximately eleven seventy-five in 2017, so Rayo isn't insisting that you earn $40,000 a year, around $20 an hour, because he's presuming you're not spending most of it even on the cost of living. In other words, Rayo's suggestion for achieving FI relies more upon living close to the bone rather than hustling as it were. 
His recommendation that an individual could become the newer by initially saving $10,575 as a nest egg to live on for two years removes the age-old excuse that freedom or liberty is unachievable because it costs too much uh, to accomplish it. He goes on to say that, quote, Be wary of get-rich schemes. If he's so smart, why ain't he rich already? If he is rich, why does he want my pocket change? Not all such schemes are conscious swindles. Many a promoter sincerely believes he has found a unique way to financial independence. But, unless he is already affluent, you don't know that it worked. Even if it worked for him, it may not for you. Opportunities change. But even if you could make it work, it probably requires a heavy psycho investment, involvement with a coerced economy, more than would a workaday job. End quote. Not only does Rayo explicitly refer to FI, but he also stresses why infomercial claims are no reliable path to FI, for actual FI relies more upon earning more income, while also cutting expenses over a period of time more so than anything else. In much the same way, there are no get-fit-easy products that reliably work, for achieving physical fitness relies more upon exercising more, while also eating less over a period of time more so than anything else. Both FI and good physical fitness require consistent discipline. Rayo further said that, quote, Tactics for saving. Make a crash program of it. Save a high proportion of income for a short time. Take savings off the top, a certain percentage of income, and live on what is left. Concentrate on big or continuing expenses, usually shelter, transportation, and food, but also be careful that small luxuries don't get big. Double up with others to save rent, drive little, make part of your monetary savings untouchable until required capital is accumulated. Don't rationalize that such and such item is really preparation for Vanu, unless you already have much experience in your intended lifestyle and know exactly what equipment and supplies you will need. Start outfitting at a local dump, discarded blankets, clothes, utensils, then try Salvation Army stores, etc. You can gradually replace with better equipment after you are Vanu, as you learn what you really need." End quote. Naturally, he's describing how to both cut expenses and save greater proportions of your take-home paycheck here. Also, Ray is describing how to begin scrounging for salvageable equipment, where sometimes the line between window shopping and dumpster diving can become quite blurry at times. Revealingly, he explicates to, quote, Keep money in simple, safe terms. If your savings are small and short-term, under $2,000, under two years, the best form for North Americans, all factors considered, including ease of conversion, is probably U.S. or Canadian $20 bills, well hidden in several places. Currency will suffer inflation losses, but... For small amounts, any other form is apt to be more trouble than it is worth. For a larger amount or a longer time, investigate gold and silver bars, or coins priced at close to metal value only, Swiss banks, etc. Avoid savings bonds or savings accounts in U.S. institutions. Don't speculate in stocks, real estate, commodities, rare coins, etc., unless you are already a full-time professional at one of these." End quote. Obviously, substitute $10,575 for $2,000, but otherwise, his recommendations here are consistent with the gold bug perspective. Granted, there are those within the alternative media who dislike anti-inflation investment because precious metal bullion cannot be used as money, they rationalize if, sh if the shit hits the fan, yet this is just one more example of why I disregard the veracity of doom porn, since it's usually employed as a lame excuse for why not to do something, and often to reinforce the servile society in some way, typically in the form of political crusading. Consider for a moment two individuals who practice frugality to the degree that it could be said they pursued, or even achieved, F.I. Henry Thoreau detailed in Walden what the cost of his one-room cabin were, and he often expressed how the mindless pursuit of wealth harmed one's spirit, or in less mystical terms, how consumerism hurts an individual's freedom. Alex Ansari still lives what could be described as a minimalist lifestyle for the past several years, ranging from living out of a teardrop camper pulled by a pickup truck, and then later RV living, to now his off-grid homestead. Interestingly enough, Rio provided additional considerations regarding both women specifically and the exporting of labor generally. As he put it addressing the woman folk, quote, Don't feel that you should provide half the capital or income. You offer your own values and talents, and not just erotic ones. By analogy, silver has no more uses than aluminum, but it has different ones and it is scarcer, so it doesn't exchange for aluminum one for one. Why should you? Most women adapt easier to Vanu living than do most men, perhaps because they are more self-sufficient psychologically. Their self-esteem depends more on personal and home activities, less upon a career involved with that society." End quote. Remember, he also thought women were invaluable for purchasing and owning private land, because he considered them as being less likely targets for military conscription, or for losing said land to the state due to lawsuits, tax, taxation, or regulations. 
Gendered social norms aside, I think Rayo's observation that women more easily become venuans is largely due to the fact that women are not targeted by the state as much as men are, because the bludgies typically assume that most lawbreakers are men, and even when there are lady criminals, these women receive lighter sentences than their male counterparts, usually because they are assumed to be not as criminal or less likely to become repeat offenders. Therefore, women automatically enjoy a higher MTH than men. Rayo went on to say that, quote, Second thoughts. Reading this, I'm not entirely satisfied with my treatment of export. Regardless of the proportion of time spent, some will value an export more than, val- than value at home. So let's concentrate on what, on what we value most. Succeed at our own thing and trade. And then we'll always have more value everywhere, end quote. Here, Rayo appears to revise his earlier statements about how Vanu should begin at home, largely through a combination of shelter development and the importing of knowledge and supplies. Generally speaking, I think it's a little hard to import much of anything if you don't export first, because to do so otherwise would be to put the cart before the horse, so to speak. Ergo, the utility of import-export as a balanced approach to exercising that one-directional isolation becomes rather quite significant, for much like any other true duality, each yin needs their own yang. Finally, Ray also made a brief mention of how FI, as well as import-export, could be utilized in a broader context. He wrote, quote, Some people talk of developing a parallel economy, producing all essential supplies and spare parts, before concerning themselves much with physical invulnerability. But this supposes involvement of millions of people. And what would a non vanu alternate economy be anyway? An enterprise vulnerable to the state must operate under state rules. This, not the rhetoric of its founders, will determine the way it operates, assuming it is a success. Function determines form. A real alternate economy requires vanu, though not necessarily wilderness forms exclusively. A Venuan can minimize dependence upon the coerced economy by stockpiling essentials. End quote. In terms of MTH, Rayo has described E level Venumi as being the minimum for an alternative, alternative economy, not to mention that the minimum profitable viability for E level activity would be a small workshop or laboratory with a 10 year MTH. Put another way, a comfortable home or tiny house is not good enough. Yet, what could facilitate individuals becoming Venuer by establishing a functional parallel economy? Rayo proposes that, quote, a Vanu association of a few dozen to a few hundred will likely be only a little more self-sufficient than one family. A remote, non vanu town of this size probably has a welder, dairy, nurse, maybe even a small machine shop. But most goods and services are more economical to import than to produce there. Even in a country of 100,000 people, such as the Bahamas, most items are imported. The major advantage of a Vanu association compared to a lone family, easier, better import-export." End quote. If true, then it begs the question of what would such a Vanu association look like exactly. Since a Venuum requires a skillful blend of concealment and deception, plus perhaps some elements of mobility and deterrence, Venuumers might have to specialize in conducting import-export on behalf of other Venuans, given the reality that is the division of labor, as well as the law of comparative advantage. All in all, when it comes to pursuing Venuans, you have to be able to walk before you can run a marathon, and similarly, if you aren't frugally disciplined, then you have no business lecturing to others about developing a second realm. You've just heard TVP number 133, Financial Independence, The Utility of Import-Exports, an article by Kyle Reardon, originally published in 2017 at vanupodcast.com. If you would like to read, uh, watch, or uh, listen to this, I guess download this uh, this audio, uh, you can visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 133. And uh, with that said, uh, thanks so much for your time today, and uh, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is indeed yours for the building. Cheers. Our strategy for liberty is the creation of a culture of liberty, a society that occupies its own protected space and implements independent systems of cooperation. We need to create a second realm.